Hi guys, welcome, welcome to Charities Bubble USA, your number one channel. I'm coming from work. Let me take off my mask so that I can talk to you. <laughs> I hope you're doing fine. It's been raining. Let me turn my camera and see. There, it rained all night. So I'm going home. I pulled a 12 hour shift, guys. But I hope that you're doing fine. I am also very well. And I am going home. I've been working hard, guys. Been working very, 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 very hard. But, like I said, I'm going to be doing videos because we have to go back where we were and talk about your questions. And I, I want to talk about a very, 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 very important question. But before that, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, kindly consider subscribing. Uh... Hit the notification button so that you can get uh, the content that you have uh, uh, that I upload. I hope that you have enjoyed um, the videos that I that I did, the ones that I was spending time with my girls and uh, the one that we went camping. Thank you for watching those. Uh, I do really appreciate you. Now, I want to talk about coming to the U.S. with a child, a family. And I want to talk about it in two ways. I'm going to talk about someone who is married and someone who is single. And someone who has got uh, older kids and someone who has got younger kids. I want to talk about those two things. Because it's important to know what you are coming to and to weigh yourself. Number one. Myself, I, I, I have never... Um, I, I don't support uh, leaving my children behind. Because um, people are different, but for me, I don't. I really like to be where my children are. But with that being said, there's this question that was asked by this lady. She says that she has a little one. I think she's two years old. And uh, she wants to come in with her. Now, I do not know whether she's married or not. But uh, the system here is a little bit different. Because when you're coming here... The first thing that you should know is that you are not going to come in and be able to hire a babysitter. Now that one, you can't. Because hiring a babysitter is very expensive. Number two, you will not be able to come in and you're very new and be able to take your child to a, like a regular daycare. Because the daycares are very, very, very expensive. Very, very, very expensive. And uh, this is not to discourage you, but people still come with babies. So this is how it works out. So you can come with your baby, but remember that um, you, when you come here in the U.S., you yourself are the ones who take care of your kids. Even if you have to take them somewhere to be watched, you are the one who takes care of your kids. So when you come with them, uh, there is an option, because I know that uh, there are fellow Kenyans who have uh, little daycare, so some, some of them, they have little kids, and they, they stay at home, especially those who are married and uh, when they stay at home uh, they they invite other people who have little kids and they watch them so you can do that so you can take your child when you come here you have to network there are so many kenyan groups so you network and you find out uh, this person uh, they, they stay at home and they have little kids and they can watch my kids or maybe they they have their mom for example if my mom is here and uh, she's living with me. Maybe I can. She can be. She, she, uh, she stays with my kids. Maybe you. You. There are some people who bring who bring their kids to uh, to parents. You see what I mean? So that's another way. The other way is uh, if you're married and you have those little babies. Here we work by schedules. Whereby there is day shift. There is night shift. There is, there is all kinds of shifts. Now, let's say, for example, if you go to, an, to a job that's an eight-hour shift, uh, you, you can go from six to two, and then either from two to ten, or from ten to six. So, you find that if, you ha if you're married, and you have a little child, excuse my owning, I'm very tired, guys. I haven't slept all night. Um, what you will do, I'm getting into the highway right now, uh, is that you will work different shifts with your spouse. Hmm? 
you're gonna work this shift and then your spouse is gonna work this shift and that's what we did with uh with my husband when we came in i remember my daughter christine was only four years old and uh she needed care and uh at that time she was about to go to school but the school that they go to is only three hours so we, we really needed to be there one-on-one -on -one so that when we take her to school we could pick her up after three hours so we decided that everybody was gonna work a different shift and that's why i work at night guys because when i work at night then my husband is able to go to work during the day and uh, there is always someone at home hmm? if it's during the day even if i have to sleep a little bit and wake up sleep a little bit and wake up to watch my kids i'm still there they are not home alone at night my husband is there and he has to watch them that's another option the other one and i was talking to this lady uh she is um she came in uh through the agencies the nursing agencies and she has a baby a two-year-old baby so she was asking me what she was gonna do i told her the same thing but if you find that you have um, enough money, you can pay for daycare. If you come for as, an, as a registered nurse, like that one came in as a registered nurse, you can be able to pay for a, for a daycare. Well, I think it can be very, very expensive. I don't know. It depends on the state. Because the, the one that I had gone to, us, and that was a while ago, was like $500 per hour. I think every every two weeks i think every week i can't even remember very well because i i never even went back but you have to have a uh, something a basis because if you have a two-year-old even if you say that you leave them home you still have to go for them uh within six months so you still have your child so the best thing is you come with them or maybe if you come to a good host and uh your host has got little kids then you can you can interchange you work uh, the opposite shift with your host and maybe your host can, if your host is kind enough, they can watch your baby, watch your child and, and when, you are, when you are at home, you can watch their child, but that's just temporary. But it, it gives you a starting point. So the best thing that I can say is that when you come in here, you have to know, uh, you have to interact with people, you have to know, um, to know, like where to go there are also other like cheap daycares like very very cheap that people do in their house you, you necessarily do not have to go to um you necessarily do not go to have to go to uh, like a school daycare uh whereby you will just go to a home it doesn't matter which even if it's for for the for the white people or whoever people or the or the, or the african-americans but you have to find, uh, you will find where you can take your kids. Yeah. Now, if you come to the state of Kansas, I know that uh, sometimes you can get help uh, to pay daycare and everything. But I do remember, and I don't know if it has changed. Uh, when we came in, uh, we were having so many problems. And uh, there's something called food stamps. So someone advised us and told us that we could go and apply for of which when we applied for we weren't given even as permanent residents we weren't so you can't come relying that you're gonna get help you have to come relying that you're gonna be able to help yourself so when you come with your child the first thing that you have to think about is you have to find somewhere you don't necessarily need to go to um to a very uh, expensive daycare you can go to people who have daycares in their houses and that one you will know by networking you just network and you will know where to take your child of course you have to make sure that it's a safe place that you're taking your child so that is what i can say about uh, kids but you find that you cannot leave them home alone here you can't leave your kids home alone if you leave your kids home alone and they're below age they will be taken away now, like me, I would say, like, at the moment, I'm kind of lucky because uh, my son is older and Christine is older. So even if by chance, maybe by chance that I wasn't home and my husband wasn't home, Eric would be home. And I know that there's an adult who is taking care of the others. Of course, when they are 12 years old, you can leave them in the house for, like, two hours or three hours. But when they are younger, you cannot leave them home alone. Like, if, if, if you are, leave them home alone and you are caught, 
you will be in so much trouble because your kids can be taken away. So those are some of the things that you have to know because it's important for you to know. But like I said myself, I don't advocate leaving my children behind because there was this suggestion that you can leave them behind and then you come for them. Remember, if you're coming with a green card, the green card only allows you to come and then it gives you a excuse me a gross period of six months whereby you have to go and get your family members so you will still have to come home uh, uh to go home and get your kids so very 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 important so i hope that this is gonna help or you have an idea of what you're coming for because you have to know this is what i'm coming for or whatever mm -hmm. so i hope that this is gonna help so i'm going home right now today is sunday morning the highway is clear you know, it's a weekend. The highway is clear. There are not so many cars. You know, I, I, this is the highway that I always drive in. And sometimes it's very, very, very busy. This is the highway that I did. Um, I think when I was there was an accident. This is the highway. And sometimes there's so many cars. But right now, when you look at it, it's very, very, very empty. Very, very clean. There are not so many cars. Very, very few. Because people are sleeping in. Others are preparing to go to church. It's still 6.55 a.m. I think I should be home by 7.15. And uh, I like driving when the highway is, uh, is clear. And you find that you cannot overspeed. Even if there are not so many cars, you just drive at your pace. Because if you overspeed, you get a ticket. And a ticket means that you are going to pay money. Huh? A ticket means that you are going to pay money for overspeeding. So you don't want to overspeed. You just drive at your own speed another thing there's a policeman right behind me if you look at that that's a police car <laughs> that's a police so if i was over speeding i would have gotten a ticket that's a policeman uh, there so you don't over speed you just drive at your pace and uh, even if you go to you can go and you're driving you find a place written stop there's a stop sign you cannot pass a stop sign even if there are no cars or you cannot pass a red light even if there are no cars you have to obey the traffic laws. Mm? So I hope that uh, you can see. Uh, this car here at the side of the road, that one is, uh, is broken down. But normally it's going to get a tag. It gets a yellow tag and then a red tag. And then if you don't go to collect it, it's stored. And then you will have to go and pay for the towing um, fee. And pay where they took it and then you can get your car. So... When your car breaks down, you just leave it there in the highway. And nobody touches it. <laughs> mm, I like to show you around. Mm, I do like to show you around. So that uh, even when you come, you'll have an idea. Look at this road. It's so clear. Nobody. Mm, this is another highway that I have joined. This one is called 235. This one is called 235. It's not a very busy road, but um, I hope you can see the clouds. It was raining. It's been raining. We are almost, we are still in summer, but um, in August, it really, it rains a lot. It really rains. And a, a part of end of July and August, it really rains. And that's why when it's uh, summer holidays, people like to go to travel in May and June because July it rains a lot. It does rain a lot. And you find that this is the time that we are preparing for the school year. The school year starts this month. By the end of this month, the schools are going to reopen and we are going to be busy, busy, busy. So this is August. And like I said, I always like to remind you guys, it is not only the green card, not only the green card, I need the young people to apply for school, apply for colleges. There are so many colleges, and the only thing that you need to do is to just go online and Google. Go online and Google. Mm -hmm. There are so many colleges that you can apply for, especially if you have done, if you had done exemplary well in school. If you had an A, if you had a B, if you had, if you've done a course in um, in university or in college, and you want to go and further. Uh, that education you can apply for college of course right now it's too late to apply because uh, the intake has already been done but you can still apply and come in for next year you can do that because there you have to try so many ways that can land you not even 
in the US, even in Canada, even in Australia. Most, we have so many students that come in through a student visa, they go to school, and uh, it's an opportunity for them. It's a good opportunity for them. So I'm just showing you how it looks. Early in the morning, no cars. Early Sunday morning, no cars. So what I'm gonna do, one of the things that I do after I come from work, especially, I, do, I really don't like working Saturday nights, but I had to work because I don't have so many hours. So I'm trying to squeeze in what I am getting. Uh, one of the things that um, I do is that I go take a shower, uh, wash my kids, and then we are gonna go to church. We are gonna go to church, and then after church, then I'm gonna come and sleep because I, I don't have to go to work tonight, but I have to go to work tomorrow. So you'll have to have like a kinda a schedule that you follow so that uh, you can be able to survive because here it's all about schedule. But remember what I said about kids, you have to, you really have to have a plan. It's better when you're married, when you have a spouse, but it's still okay even if you don't have a spouse because even single women have survived. Hmm? So, and if you come in, especially if you're planning to come in, you're getting ready to come in, uh, you can reach out to me and uh, we can see uh, how uh, I can help. I was talking to this lady and um, she was asked, she was uh, requesting if she could get uh, someone who could watch her baby, like I said, and uh, I just told her, because she's in a different state, she's not here with me to ask around, ask the Kenyans who are around, because they are there, there are so many groups. Uh, if there is anybody who's, even if their mom is here and they can do just babysitting or whatever, because sometimes when you're starting life, you have to start low. And when you come in here in the US, it's not gonna be a walk in the park, guys. It's hard, hmm? it's very, very hard. You know, sometimes I get surprised whereby, um, and I was listening to them. They were talking about um, when you send someone money and uh, maybe they go and spend it badly or maybe they are rude because you didn't send them much. But when you come here on this side in the U.S., especially when you're starting life, it is hard, guys. Because you're starting from zero. You have to understand the culture. You have to, like, there is so many things. You have even to learn how to drive a car especially if you didn't know how to drive a car. You have to learn how to drive one, especially if you live in a state like the one that I am in right now. If you don't, then you won't have anybody who is gonna be getting you from your house. And on top of that, you have to start working and you are living in someone else's house. So you're not a hundred, even if that person gives you everything, you will still not be comfortable because you are an adult and maybe you are used to living by yourself. So you will still feel like there is a deficit. So it's hard, huh? and this is for the people who are left back home. If someone sends you something, even if it's $5, even if it's $20, $30, $50, accept that. Because if you don't, you don't know what people do. Like you don't know the kind of job that people do for them to get that money. So it's very, very important for people to appreciate, especially the people who are in abroad. Because they go through a lot. Oh my gosh, they go through a lot. Hmm? Sometimes you can go to work and you are a professional. Like I am a professional nurse. It's not that I am not. Yes, I am. But then you go into someone's room and they just decide to be very rude. You know, they're yelling at you and they're just, you know what I mean? Like you, you, will, you will still maintain your professionality because you are a professional and you're not gonna be, go to their level. But at the end of the day, if you, have, if you have worked so hard and gotten your money through some of those situations and then you send it to someone and you understand that that person has embezzled the money or they have used it badly, or you have sent it to them and they have gone to, that's, that's the money that they are using to go and uh, hang out with their friends or whatever, it feels bad. So the little that you get from um, your family members, it's a courtesy. Because when you come here in the U.S., the culture is a little bit different, whereby here the children, they really do not take care of their parents. 
and it's not that they don't want to it's because everybody has got their own bills to pay you know um i've seen uh if you go out let's assume you're going out all of you are going out for, for so someone tells you uh let's go out and have a dinner it's not like the way um in africa whereby you tell someone that you're going for dinner that you're gonna pay for them here if you're going with someone for dinner you have to have your own money because you have to pay for yourself the other thing if you are at work and someone asks you uh, can i get you something from quick trip or can i get you something from mcdonald's and they come and bring you something you have to pay them back it's not for free here people don't give each other be, be stuff for free no it's unless you're very close very 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 close friends that's when you you can get something from someone for free but it's rare guys so you have to understand that uh it's a little bit different so guys i'm almost home and i'm gonna stop this video here i hope that i've answered that question and i was able to talk about more things and if you have subscribed to my youtube channel kindly consider subscribing so thank you guys for always supporting my my channel thank you guys for always subscribing i wish you all the best in whatever that you're doing thank you and god bless you